Hi everyone. It is May 17, 2019. Flooding. I'm going to show you that there are so many areas that they are just sitting in water. The water is not receding or they were flooded out and now they are flooded again. But I want to start with this video. A subscriber who lives in Oroville, California wanted me to pass along this video, which I think I did in some of my videos, but just in case, Oroville Dam fells at 908 feet, and yes, um, Mrs. Potter or Pot R blog. So please take a look at this video and circulate it. Another dam failure, by the way. Um, and I want to thank the subscribers who sent along information to me. This was sent along last night. Another dam failure. Lake Dun Dunlap. Spill gates collapse. Causing hazardous conditions on the Guadalupe River in the Gonzales area of Texas. And look at this collapse. Wow, okay. That's an. I, I. Look, I don't know how dams collapse, but something is pushing this up. It just seems odd to me. That's all I can say. Well, the lake is now very shallow and the property value of the homes on the lake have depreciated. Ain't that great. Not great for the people who live there. Okay. I will link below to everything. To everything. Um, this video is really very, it's just heartbreaking uh, what is taking place. The Mississippi Delta backwater flooding. Homes flooded, communities underwater, full story. And <clears throat> I can't play any of this video. This is live storms media. And it's really, listen to all of the people who are interviewed in this area having to live what is a, a manufactured flood, essentially, due to the Army Corps of Engineers. Backwater flood. And there's no pump. They have no pump system to get this water out. So they're sitting in water. Homes literally destroyed. The water is just sitting there. And nothing is being done for them. Okay. Um, Nebraska. These are today or yesterday's videos. There are so many areas. I, I, it's like, it's really, we've never lived this before. Areas around the country are sitting in water.
So whole areas have been decimated, decimated. And I have driven around <laughs> this country. I have seen the proliferation of Gwen Towers all over, you know, driving through Kansas on farm land. You see so many cell towers and so many Gwen Towers. So whomever is wanting to put up these Gwen Towers, they go to the farmers and they say, hey, can we put this Gwen Tower up on your property and we will lease, um, you know, and, and pay you a monthly fee. The farmer says yes. The Gwen Towers emit extremely low frequencies either into the atmosphere or through the, gr the ground. And when they're emitting these frequencies through the ground, they are making the land and the roads and the bridge, all of it very vulnerable. So when you have these floods, they don't necessarily need the frequencies to do this to the infrastructure of the area because the ground frequencies have already been setting it up for this kind of destruction. Nebraska. A Nebraska National Guard helicopter lands at Rylander Park in Plattsmouth. Uh, the lime and those kinds of things. Guard members talking with city leaders about the day's mission. Well, we've got to figure out a way to get some heavy equipment out to the water treatment plant so that we can be begin making repairs. After debriefing, they take off. Surveying the flooding around the water treatment plant. The water here still isn't receding. City Administrator Irv Portis says he saw breaches on the south side of the Platte River but is still optimistic about getting the equipment they need to the treatment plant to start repairs. I'm really encouraged by what we saw today. Um, that I, uh, you know, there's there's a pathway forward. We just got to figure out what's the what's the best route. One of the solutions being weighed is if equipment can be airlifted in. Nebraska National Guard is willing to lend a helping hand. The Nebraska Guard's here. If, if there is something that uh, we can assist with, if it gets to that point, um, we'll be more than happy to do so. Just really, really appreciative of the Guard, Colonel Bain, General Bohack. And you know, yeah, I'm appreciative of an organization that is responsible for so much of this damage. Nebraska. Well, this river came up quick. It came up a lot faster than we were expecting it to. The floodwaters have receded. Families are safe again. What now? It's going to take probably years of uh, the rebuilding on these cities that are essentially underwater. How will we recover? Who will pay? And can we prevent this from happening again? Well, I've been through it. Uh, this will be my fourth time. The floods are over, but the story isn't. But when your property, your building, looks like this, where do you even start? News Channel Nebraska is still working. I mean, somebody's got to clean this up. To find answers, push for action. Yeah, and I'm sure you're going to get the answers when you push for action. Iowa. It's gone. And now it's back. Flooding isn't finished with Percival, Iowa. Some of this water is getting back into houses, maybe getting a little higher than it did originally, so now they got more damage. Residents like Philip Peters have watched the waters recede enough to get in and start cleaning up, only to see it rise again over the last few days. A little over a week ago, the streets in town were actually dry. Fremont County Emergency Management Coordinator Mike Cresselius says the only thing that's changed since then Railroad contractors have moved in and started repairs on BNSF's track. Once the railroad starts stopping up those holes underneath their tracks, the water has to go someplace else. Cresselia says the town had the same problem in 2011. He's pushing for pipes to be installed to help with drainage, telling me some were put in closer to Bartlett, but it's not enough to help Percival 10 miles to the south. Now all of a sudden it's like uh, they don't have time for us.
BNSF sent me a statement saying it's working to minimize impact on Iowa communities and that based on surveys, the company believes, quote, the water surface elevation in Percival is not affected by the railroad. That's because our hydrologist hasn't come out here and seen it. So if they would come back out here and put some more pipes in over here, I think it would help. If they can't come to an agreement with BNSF, Fremont County officials say they're ready to take this all the way to Washington. In and this Iowa, this uh, video was posted today. Flooding in Iowa. We the wash. Pilot's Pilot. open. Pilot open? I think, maybe not. No, their fire's the last flooded. No, they're open. You can't get to it. Oh, you're right. I'm going to... Well, and now they're calling for more severe weather in the Central Plains, but I don't know what to make of these weather reports that we are hearing. They are so unbelievably dramatic and, well, then nothing happens. Uh, I think there were some streets flooded in Spokane, Washington last night. Um, I went on my um, sites, which, hang on for one sec. So it doesn't look like much is happening in California. Uh, the three storms back to back, you know, continuous rain. And the storms that then were going to be hitting the Central Plains, 800,000 uh, square miles, a swath of severe thunderstorms, large hail, um, high winds, 80 mile per hour, hurricane winds. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, it's so, yeah. Guys, when you're at war, all you can do is count on each other. You certainly can't count on your government and its agencies. And what do they say? about war. What's the first fatality? Truth. Truth. So, uh, yeah, all links are below. But do check out the video um, from Live Storms Media. It's really remarkable what's happening to people. Hope you have a good weekend. Ciao.